Right, and I might finish this presentation with two little extra things. First of all, showing you uh, a way that you can go from a variable t which is a, effectively a, well, a constant and it's just, it doesn't have any way of changing itself to making it a variable. It's just a self a function of other things. Notice I've got population here just as a constant. If I right click, I can choose add integral. And that creates n with an integral block to it. And what I can do is then define population to be a um, growing system. So if I say, so if I say pop underscore curly brackets gr, the growth rate, and so say the growth rate is 2% uh, per annum. And I now say multiply the population level by the growth rate, integrate it, you have the population level. And I can now wire this directly over here as well. I might as well do that actually just for completeness. So now I've got a growing population in the whole system. And I can do the same to the labour productivity. So let's just make an add integral there. I'll back it up here just to uh, have some room on the system, copy the variable, and then have new constant which I'll call LP underscore curly brackets GR for growth rate. Make that 1% per annum. Multiply those together. And I'll lasso that just for neatness, and then edit it and call it labor productivity. Clearly, you've got a few options. The fact that it's here and here will mean that the value is transferred through over to that particular location. Hit it. Okay. So, notice a bit of a change to the actual dynamics of the system now as well. Okay. Save that. date modified. Yeah, three months call it. Okay, that's working out from a very basic combination of a good model with no nonlinearities in it through to one that includes finance that has population growth, labour productivity change, a monetary system as well. All fairly straightforward to do and done on the fly. Uh, this is one I did without, uh, uh, well, took a bit longer to work this one out, but this is a monetary version of my 1995 paper of Minsky's Financial Instability Hypothesis. And this is using a few more of the features of the program that I've shown you in this uh, little presentation here. Uh, again, we've got to make things scale more accurately than we're managing to do right now. But if I now simulate this model, uh, let's just move it pan it over so you can see part of the, the key dynamics I want to display here. So we're getting a genuine debt deflation coming out of this model in what looks like a period of stability leading to breakdown. The same basic argument made back in 1995 but now with deflation turning up in the system as well and a one-way collapse rather than the two-way breakdown that that completely, well, the implicit monetary system had back in 1995. So I think Minsky has come a long way, it's got a long way to go, but I think it's uh, definitely a framework, uh, the only framework for building explicitly monetary models of the capitalism, and it's about time economists started to do that. <laughs>